Hi guys. Oh. So this is a great respect to the audience and a great respect to Rambag, TEDx and also the speaker who have come before me. And uh, martial arts is a different world altogether. I am sure many of you are aware about it. But in martial arts, we start with the respect. And when I say OS, that means it's my gratitude, my salute to all of you for being present here, for being here to inspire other guys outside. So thank you so much. And uh, let us start with uh, a journey of uh, martial arts which I started in the year 1982. That was the time when I thought of getting into this and the story is very, very you know, different. But before that, uh, I would like to take you through the history of martial arts. There is no proven record because it is more than 4,000 years ago. This art has been introduced. And the purpose of this art to introduce is nothing but a safety and, and security. Our ancient time, you know, uh, the monks, they were finding it very difficult to survive because of two reasons. One is they used to do meditation. They were on fasting. And because of that, they were a little nervous, they were a little weak and they become a very easy target for goons and the dacoits. And that's how they were thinking of what to do, how they can self, how they can defend themselves. And that's how they started learning this art and they are the introducer. Over to that, after so many years, it has moved all across the world, it has taken a different shape and today what we call it as a martial arts. The term martial arts, martial is a sort of a war, combat, and art is the way you handle the combat. So this journey of mine started, as I mentioned, in the year 1982 when I was in school. And then once I completed my black belt in the year 1986, I wanted to get into this thoroughly and wanted to become a champion. And I also wanted uh, to, to have it all across the country. The vision was big, but age was the factor. There were so many limitations. I will tell you how I, across, I, how I, I move across those limitations. But before that, I've been practicing martial art for the last 40 years. And along with that, fortunately, I could also take care of my working profession. So I am an HR professional. My, my profession is to deal with people and I love it. So when I deal with people, there are so many, you know, interaction happen. You try to understand what they are, from where they come in, what is the background. So that is something always very interesting to know. So with this, uh, I will, yeah. So to make it much simpler, what is martial art? And, and to make it simpler is because, because we all have our education background. So I will help you in terms of understanding what is martial art in real sense. So first of all, as we all are educated guys, KC Gandhi itself is a school, and in education there are various streams, right? From arts, science, commerce, architect, so on and so forth. Similarly, in martial art, there are various forms of art, right from karate, taekwondo, kickboxing, mixed martial art, aikido, jujutsu, hundred of arts. It's an ocean. So anybody who practice these art is called martial artist. And the journey is not so easy. You have to keep enhancing your skill, you have to keep enhancing your knowledge in this particular art. So that's how the difference between martial arts and, and education, it will help you to understand what exactly it is. So, so my story heroes are the people who are there on the screen. 
these are the guys who have really helped me to change my entire story and entire life. I have my gurus who is Indian. I also have my gurus who are from abroad. So I am fortunate to train with them and still I am training. I am still trying to understand this art religiously. So I have my gurus right from Shihan. We call them Shihan. Shihan is the designation being given to the gurus. We call them Shihan Faisal who is from India. We have Shihan Chris Thompson from South Africa. We have Shihan Bill Brissau from USA. We have Shihan Lanyon from South Africa East. And then we have the late Shihan Hilly Daniel from UK. So I am very fortunate uh, to, uh, to, to train with these guys and still the training journey is on. Now before I move ahead, this is something a very important question. What we all look in our life? Any answers? I am sure everybody knows it. What we really look out for in our life? Purpose, success, success money, money peace. happiness, peace. peace. Lovely. I think if I stay for a few more minutes, everybody will be right. So this is uh, sorry. Yeah. So this is what everybody is looking in a life. There's a success, happiness, good health good wealth. Now with this what happens is I'll just take you through the when we need this the foundation has to be that way but I think somewhere we are lacking in our foundation if you really see the education the Indian education system or worldwide we start from the school when we are in the school the focus is on fun learning sports then we move ahead towards the matriculation time. Your focus is on study and sports. Then we move to the college. It's a different world. College is a different world everyone is looking forward for. And when we move to the college, the focus is on study, something else, you guys know. And sports is a little bit, passion is somewhere in the corner and then the turn comes for your career. Some goes for the higher education, some goes for the career and when you move to the corporate world, then it is your output, then it is your commitment but sports and your passion takes the back seat. I think that's the trend. I'm not saying that everyone is following the same, but I think that's the trend. And when I meet people, so in my professional career, my job is to, to interact with people, to understand their need and to help them in terms of achieving their goals in the organization so that they win an organization win. When I talk to them and when I understand their journey, right from their school, college and then when they come to corporate I ask them what sports you used to play, what are your hobbies, what are your passions, somebody was talking about art, what kind of art you have, do you have any charm in your life besides your study, besides your profession and people say that yes I used to be a football player, I used to be a musician, I used to be a singer, I used to be so and so but now it is difficult to continue. And that's the sad part and that's how you know you feel sad that once you get into the corporate world you feel that the journey is over. For me this was a big question when I joined the corporate in 1990 and that was the time where I have to take the decision whether I have to continue with my sports or I have to continue with the corporate or I have to manage both. I have taken the third option but with lot of difficulties, lot of challenges. But today when I look back, I feel absolutely great. I feel happy. I feel satisfied and touched by the grace of God, good health. So, so this is a quick uh, uh, background. And now if you can see on the background, this is a small boy who wanted to become a tabla artist. And I used to 
play tabla those days. You know, I, I joined tabla and I'm talking about 80s time when there is no communication, no source of information, no social media, tags and all those kind of stuff. It is only you, your family member, your surrounding, that's your world. And for that time, for me, this was the option and I was very happy. The issue was, when I used to go to school, I was in a class 6, I was the shortest student in my class till 10th standard. People used to make fun that you will not get admission in the college because your height is too short. Nobody will allow you to go to the college and those days used to believe on the hearsays. If your senior, you know, fellow colleague is saying you something, you have to, you have to believe. And then I say, oh my God, what to do? Number two, because of my height, because of my nature, I was little submissive. And I was little introvert. So every senior used to take undue advantage of me. People used to bully around. And I was the easiest target. And my question was always, why me? To get anything, he has to go. In case of making any fun, I was the, I was the target. And that's how my looks were. You can, you can see that. And uh, with this, the environment for me was very unsafe. And I recollect the monks time. You know, the monks were having the similar situation and I was in a similar situation. For me, the question was, what should I do? And in my time, as I mentioned, there was no YouTube, there is nothing, you know, you can pick it up and then just learn. So for my time, it was only two things. There were only two things. One is Superman. And number two is Bruce Lee. That was a movie called Into the Dragon. I guess it was published in 1972. So these two, two legions were there in front of my eyes and it was just an imagination. Moreover, there were no TVs in a kilometer range. So if you are staying in a particular location, I am talking again about 1980s and 82, there were no television available. So you have to believe on systems whichever is available in front of you. So, so there is no source, but yes, one fine day what has happened is, I come across a book while traveling to my native place in a train. I, I requested my dad that I want this book. By the way, my dad has a very strong background. He was a working professional and he was also a practitioner of a boxing because in those days in the school, boxing was one of the subjects because he was in a different school. And I used to always see in the morning doing his training. And with his training, with his training, he used to, i just take this back, yeah, sorry. So with this uh, training, after this training, he used to go to office. So that was always in my back of the mind that yes, I want to become something like this. But for me, to learn something to defend myself was a big question. So I requested him while going through the train, I said, Dad, will you help me to get this book? And the book was, Learn Karate in 30 Days. And I said, this is the book, this is the, you know, my, my goal. I want this book. And my dad says, uh, okay, I'll, I'll get you this book. And with the help of this book, my journey started. <coughs> So, the first and important thing is uh, something is better than nothing, you know. You need to learn how to live with those things which are available. So, with the help of this book, I was having two options. One is to go through the book, which was too technical. At the same time, there were certain basic things were given. How to make your body seasoned. How to make certain part of your body more stronger. And my purpose was, I wanted to become a very strong man. But the book was so technical, it was very difficult to understand those techniques because my background was nothing. And I was searching for a mentor, I was searching for the guru, I was searching for the master. But in kilometers range there was nothing and no source of information. So what I did is, instead of waiting, because my environment was getting tough day by day, people used to bully every day. So, what I did is, I started going through the book, I divided the entire book in two parts. One is the easiest part, where 
you know, you can learn the simple things. And I started spending my time. Whenever I used to go to school in the recess, I used to take one or two friends of mine along with me and I used to do some kind of a basic training. And believe me, this, this rigor was completely different. Within three months time and four months time, I started seeing changes in my body. The first and foremost thing is I developed my knuckles. Because those days, uh, if someone's hands are black here, you know, this is called knuckles. This is the hardest part, part of the body which you use to attack. So if the knuckles are black, that means this person is something to do with a combat sport. And he is deadly. So I did this trick. I said, let me make my knuckles first so that I can go in the school and at least say that, yes, here is a guy. You know, now I am no more the same innocent, you know, a simple boy, the very strong boy. So I did that knuckles training very hard. I started doing a lot of practices and all that, whatever was easiest given in the book. And over a period of time, just in six months time, I could see the change in myself. And at the same time, I started getting a lot of recognition from the colleagues and from the friend. And I was feeling little safe and I said, yes, at least, you know, I'm, at, I'm right at the right place. Now, same way, something is better than nothing. What I'm saying is, I mean, I'm talking about the future. I mean, post that. I was training, I mean, till date, let me tell you, in the last 40 years, till date, I could touch around more than 10,000 students training for so many years and all across various parts mainly from Kalyan but yes the journey is that's where it's on so when I was going for the world championship I'm talking about the time when I started conducting the class we were having no infrastructure to compete at a world level the question was what has to be done you want to stay there and you have to just give an excuse and not to do but with the help of like-minded students, dedicated students you know we could achieve in a limited requirement, in a limited space and with a limited infrastructure we could manage you know to make a mark at international level so this is something important learning uh, another one very important point in my life is uh, you know never give up so this is the time in 1986 when I became a black belt. I was very happy. I was on the top of the world. My dad was so happy and he said, yes, here is my man. But the same time after a few years, because immediately after I completed my black belt, I started imparting training because something was there in my mind. And by the time I had, I had played many tournaments and I could establish myself. Then my dream was to make people like me around and that was my vision. And what has happened is, in the year 1990, I had two serious issues. The one incident is, I met with a serious accident. And second is, the same year I lost my dad. And that was the time the situation was totally changed. The doctor who did the surgery, I mean this was not the deeper surgery, it was just a treatment given to my collarbone and thigh. There was a huge major fracture. And doctor suggested me one thing that you have to be away from martial arts because if you apply a force, any part of your body, especially the upper part, you will face a big problem. And that's the warning being given by the doctor and then he said, rest is your responsibility. On the other side, and I was in a deep thought what to do, everything was like dark because martial arts for me was a life. I can never think beyond martial arts, anything. So what has happened is, the same time when I lost my dad, the entire responsibility of my family came on me and I had no option but to join a corporate world. So the options is very simple, to quit everything and focus only on your profession. But what I did is, I took a pause. And since I was having my own dojo, dojo is a place where you train people, 
I used to go and sit in the dojo and look at my students and I was just thinking that maybe after two months and three months time I need to close this dojo because I am like a, you know, a man who will not be able to support them. But at the same time I was deeply connected with this art and I started taking small small baby steps. Again the same thing what I did in the school, I again started doing it and by then I was having a good understanding of the body movements and the dynamics part. So what has happened is, within two to three months time, I at least realized that yes, I will be able to manage this. And when I got an opportunity in a, in, a, in a company, there I requested the management that please allow me to continue my sports. And fortunately, they allowed me. Of course, there is a background, but they allowed me. And from then till now, the journey is on. So that never give up part is invited inside. This is basically another important thing is we become an influencer. We influence people, you know, we become a role model. And when I say we means by then after 1990, I started creating people like me. So more of my students, they started getting the same skills. They started developing themselves. They become the black belt. They started teaching others. And that's how we started growing. And with that, what we did is at my home also I created the same background, same atmosphere. I used to practice every day in the morning, I used to go to office, come back, going to the dojo, coming back again next day morning, training, office, back. So the work-life balance was absolutely set. And then I was blessed with the baby girl, Ritika, who had just come on the stage. And uh, I also had my son, Rohan. Both of them had seen me right from their childhood doing the same training and they picked up the same thing without any compulsion. And from then till now, they are continuing in these sports. Not only them, they, but also there are students. They picked up this sport so well and they, they are managing the show till, till now. So we feel happy. This part is very, very important, which is more to do with the spirituality. Uh, Five years ago, my mother was suffering from serious illness, majorly the diabetes, followed by dementia, followed by Parkinson's. And when we met the doctor, doctor told us that there is a less possibility of getting cured with all these diseases, but she has to live with that. And the chances of having a longer life, a better lifestyle is, is very, very difficult. So you have to live on the medicines and all. Now for me, it was very difficult because I have to take care of her. So what I did is, I started adding one more schedule in my lifestyle by spending my quality time with her. So morning, instead of going to my dojo, I started practicing at home and I was looking at her because she was unable to even walk. She was even unable to think about anything because her Dementia has killed her entire memory system and all that. Parkinson had made, us, made her completely very weak. So what I did is, I started interacting with her. I started spending a lot of time with her. I could feel her pain. And with that, what I did is, I started applying the principle of martial arts. I started showing her small, small drill. And then she believed in me. And over a period of time, she started practicing it regularly with me from 5 minutes to 10 minutes, 10 minutes to 15 minutes. And by the grace of God, it took 2 years. Today, she is 81 and she is perfectly fit, fine, no dementia, no Parkinson's, no diabetes. And she is like a role model for, uh, for everyone. So believe me, even this morning when I was coming for, uh, I mean, for thinking about this show, she was asking me, what is there today? I said, today something I'm going to talk about myself, my journey and all that. I think you are a part of my journey. So you are my pathways. You know, I have seen you right from my childhood and, and you are my inspiration. She does the punch. She does everything. And these are all very safe exercises. I think all the martial artists, they have been trained so well. How to, how to deal with the different part of the body, how to deal with the mindset of the people. So that really helped. And, and this is how, you know, we, we, I'm so glad that she has come out of it. 
and she is a role model now in her community. So not only the kids, not only the adults, but also the aged people, they started taking the tips from her. And when she goes to the temple, she is like uh, giving her gyan or experiences to everyone, giving them about, you know, this thing. So, anyway, this part is uh, anger. Anger is something we deal with anger every day. But when it comes to martial arts, we, we play with our anger. We want that anger. But we throw those angers on the heavy bags. We throw those anger during the sparring. But the moment sparring is over, we hug each other and we salute them saying that thank you so much for absorbing my anger. So that is, that is something. And last is uh, this point about to be a martial artist, one has to be the artist of life. And that is what is the lesson for me and that is what I have been teaching everyone and that is what I am influencing everyone. Thank you so much guys. If you have any passion, please continue and enjoy your life. Thank you.